Hello, Teethenware users. In this video, we are going to go over using the mesh editing tools that Teethenware has to offer. There are many reasons you may need to use these tools, including dealing with a model containing non-manifold geometry, to working with a model that has too many vertices or triangles and is slowing down your system. Before getting started, let's go over what non-manifold geometry is. Non-manifold geometry is basically geometry that cannot exist in the real world. Hence why it's important to watch out for it when getting ready to print your model. One form non-manifold geometry takes is when objects share vertices, edges, or faces. Next, you'll want to keep your eyes out for holes in your model. One of the reasons these cause issues is because they create geometry with zero thickness. And no matter how small something may be in the real world, it still has a certain amount of thickness to it. Similar to shared faces is overlapping geometry. And finally, keep an eye out for self-intersecting geometry, like you see here. Before using mesh editing tools, you will need to turn on support mode. First, we will start with shrink wrapping our 3D model. This should fix most geometry issues that prevent you from printing your object or if you're finding you're having trouble attaching supports to your model. Increasing the resolution will decrease the size of the triangles being applied to your model and will more accurately capture finer details. As you can see for this model, it's a bit overkill, but it shows the resolution that the program is capable of. When dealing with a model whose poly count is too high and bogging down your system, you will want to use the Reduce Mesh tool to decrease the number of polygons on your object. The higher you increase the percentage slider, the lower resolution the end result will be. You may have to test at different percentages to find the best fit for the object you are reducing. The next step is to hollow out your mesh. Hollowing out your model has the benefit of reducing the amount of resin needed to print your model, but also may be necessary to print in certain materials. Consult the material guidelines of the resin being used to determine the correct wall thickness for your print. Turn on Switch to Transparent View Model to see the end result after it's finished computing. Before adding drainage holes, I like to create infill for the object. Creating infill will give stability and strength to the print after hollowing it out and may be necessary when printing in certain materials. Once it's been added, you can move and or delete the different parts of the infill where necessary. To allow resin to escape out of a hollowed out model, we are going to need to add holes to the object. You will need to add holes to both the top and bottom sides of the model to allow the resin to flow freely. Once you have placed drainage holes, hit the escape key to exit the tool and then you are free to select, move, resize and even delete the holes you have placed. You can also boolean out the drainage holes from the model. This will allow you to export the object with the holes intact, but be aware that this is a permanent change to the model that you won't be able to edit later. If you ever have a need to separate objects that have been combined together, you can use the Split Disjoint Shells tool. Note, this only works for objects that have been combined together. Anything that's been boolean together will not separate.
Once you've split the objects apart, you can use the Batch Process tool to lay out and add supports to all of your objects at once. This helps reduce the amount of time spent in the program and get to the printing process quicker. Inversely, you may want to do a quick mashup of multiple objects, and you can do this by selecting everything you want to join together and use the tool Join Disjoint Shells. These tools allow you to edit simple and more complicated objects. Thank you for watching this video, and please check out the other tutorials on our channel. If you have any questions, email us at support at tthon3d.com.